Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So, the other day I tried my best to kind of touch base with what's been happening in Malta in regards to their song festival, MESC, whereby I would normally say the song gets selected for Eurovision, but at least we know the artist will be from historical experience. Um, anyway, that video is kind of moot in the sense of large parts of it are because Aiden has been disqualified. Now, I was at work when my phone was pinging and like initially I was like, well, that's fake news. Like particularly on Twitter at the moment, um, the Euro fan base, which I'm kind of loving, are just deciding just to tweet fake stuff and just see what happens. So I know my friend Amma, the Balkan guy on YouTube, he tweeted that Adele was doing Eurovision for the UK a couple of weeks ago and like so many people reposted it and shared it and viewed it and I was like, what is going on with the world? That is why students at school need lessons on fake news. <laughs> How to decipher whether something is true or false. So nonetheless, it's true. <laughs> so initially, like I said, I was skeptical, but then people on um, Instagram in Malta as well. So um, a particular YouTuber who I'm also friends with on Instagram confirmed they are from Malta, that this is in fact the case and they are absolutely gutted as most most people are generally, I feel. Um, basically, uh, I'm just reading off Eurovox news now that does officially state that he has been disqualified. He broke the rules, if you want to know what those rules are. They involve posting on social media. Rule 5.3 and 5.6, apparently, um, if we want to, want to check those out to, uh, yeah, cross-reference. So... I know exactly what they are referring to because I remember seeing it on Instagram because I I follow Aiden and um, the YouTuber who confirmed it also did confirm it was in fact this video. Ah, Aiden, not yet. Um, but it's this, this video here. And as you can see, Gaia loving this four days ago. Well, Gaia, it's been disqualified, bless you. So it's this video. Which, from my memory, gives no hints to choreography, concept, colour scheme, outfits. There is nothing in here that alludes to what we would have experienced. I think we all assumed Emmy that um, Aiden was qualifying for the final rate. I don't get what he did other than just promoting himself on his own personal Instagram, which I thought they could do anyway because he's not the only one I follow. Others are doing it as well. So I'm not particularly sure what that's about. But nonetheless, it would seem... So ESC Discord says, update. Obviously, there's been a lot of upset both inside Malta and outside of Malta in regards to this news. Um, and I haven't cross-referenced this. They're quoting tvmnews.mt. Now, I'm hoping that I'm not spreading fake news now. A spokesperson for TVM revealed that Aiden has been warned several times, naughty naughty, for unauthorised posts on Facebook and Instagram, but that he, quote-unquote, persisted in breaking the regulations. Now, Aiden, <laughs> if you were warned... <laughs> then naughty naughty and ultimately rules are in place i think these rules are in place for fairness there are obviously people like aiden as a huge fan base but i still don't i don't my brain doesn't get it because everything that i've seen aiden put onto his instagram kind of doesn't allude to what we're going to expect on stage he is from what i understand a full-time recording artist it's his job so what, he's going to go ra radio silence on Instagram? Like, this is a long process, this kind of music festival. I just think that this is kind of a storm in a teacup. Now, for me, I think this is only... This is just not a good thing. Like, I can't really talk about the ethics. Like, I'm a bit of a kind of rule stickler. I think rules are there and rules shouldn't be broken. But then you, you can so easily counter that with MESC, couldn't you? In, in regards to when people pick up the phone in Malta to vote for their artist and song for Eurovision and for them to win and then turn around and be like, actually, I don't like this song. I want to pick another one. I also kind of think, what does that mean for the other artists that lost? And you're saying that your song's not good enough to go forward, but your song's won. There's ethics behind that. But like, 
you allow that to happen. But I guess I've got to separate two things, the song contest of MESC and the song that represents Malta, because I think it is in the caveat, isn't it? The winner will go ahead and represent Malta, but ultimately they can change their song. That's within the rules. It's probably not 5.3 or 5.6, which is covering social media. Do they read these rules? (laughs) And how long are they? Um, For me, a couple of things. Number one, knowing the people that I know, a significant amount of them wouldn't be following MESC if it wasn't for Aiden. Number two, there is already criticism in regards to MESC inside Malta and outside Malta already in regards to number of songs, quality of songs, the quality of the production of these quarterfinals, are they necessary? Number three, for some people that are or have been critical, they believe, from what people have said to me, that MESC is palatable because there's one or two shining stars slash and or songs. And Aiden's one of those. So by disqualifying this, you are already alienating, from what I can see, quite a small amount of people that are watching this anyway. There are hardcore Euro fans that will watch anything. And like I said in my previous video, I actually quite enjoy it now on Friday, not watching the quarterfinals, but actually just logging on Twitter and actually seeing people's comments as they watch it. People outside of Malta that are Euro fans. It's very, very funny. But yeah, I just think for the show, for ratings, for the commercial aspect aspect of the show, getting rid of Aiden was that a smart move. And and yeah, but also let's just acknowledge Aiden was a big draw for people outside of Malta to even engage with this anyway. And does this mean that it's just a one horse race now with Brooke? And as a result of that, that that even means someone like me, do I care as much now moving forward in regards to MESC when it is clear from what I've seen so far, Brooke is streets ahead. And I was quite excited about a kind of Brooke versus Aiden showdown. For me, I've, I've listened and reacted to Maxine's of Full. I don't think that that is, even though she is very, very talented and that voice is insane, I think the song is somewhat... F- I can't sing it now. It's forgettable. So f- in that regards, I don't think that's a great choice for Malta. But it's a shame. It's a shame. But it's happened. I don't think Malta's going to go back on it. But I will say, there is a petition, <laughs> if you care. So um, there is a petition that has been forwarded to me. Um, It would seem that 421 people have signed it. Let's get to 500. Bring back Aiden to Malta on change.org. I mean, it will give you the reasons why you should do this. Uh, (laughs) Feel free to read it. As far as I'm aware, he's broken the rules. He was warned that he was breaking the rules and he's broken them. So he's gone. So... I just think for me as a Eurovision fan and interested in national finals, it's just kind of taken a little bit of interest away from me. Now Aiden's gone. So, and we all know he's passionate about Eurovision and it's his dream to do it. So that's even heartbreaking. Actually, I, I still think that actually Regina's not a bad song. That is extremely infectious. And actually it comes into my head quite frequently. The rest of the song I don't remember. Um, anyway... Onwards and upwards. Um, While I'm on this, let's check out one or two or maybe three other songs. So I was very, very fortunate to have a subscriber message me basically saying, because I said, oh, where are all of these songs? I'm so disappointed. I really want to react to them. Um, And then an amazing person called Ryan, Ryan Kint, forwarded me this this little uh, gem, ESC videos, which has them here. They're all here. In fact, there's ones from other national finals as well. Now I have three in mind that I want to watch. I am gonna start with my favorite from the snippets and that's Eliana. Okay, so hopefully this works. I've seen the beat already. I don't know why it's doing this. Is it because I'm streaming it through Twitter? Come on, Eliana. Come on, the Eurovision gods. Thank you. Guess what? In the movies. That's good. 
Guess what? I like this song. Um, so I was a huge fan of, I don't know if I made this comparison when I reacted to the snippet of Queen Bee's and Melody Grand Prix last year. Love that song. This isn't within the same vein. Um, I have seen one or two people who support this song who have said that when it comes to the final, they want it more kitschy, more kind of cheesy. I'm kind of down with that. Throw the cheese at this performance. Um, because the melody itself is already infectious. You can already hear that she knows what she's doing with that vocal. Give this song a chance. I think this is a good song. Like, at the end of the day, I said this about the quarterfinals, I don't like this format because it requires an understated performance. But this just wants... Cheese. I'm still, still team guess what. I still think already it's better than... And any and I people think that's controversial. I think it's better than any of the songs I've heard in MESC so far. Um, it's still better than Brooks for me. I think there's so much potential with that song. That musical interview is quite long, so I'm hoping that that's kind of shrouded a little bit with some sort of entertainment on stage. If this gets into the final, I really hope it does because I think it is a good song. I just want people to give this song a chance. I think it's a good song. It's what. This song needs to be performed. That's gonna give it that extra boost. And dance, guess what? Growing my success. Just take a chance, guess what? This needs backing dancers, it needs interaction between her and backing dancers. It needs a set, and what I mean by that is some sort of concept, whether it's kind of a dressing room with like mirrors, makeup, interaction with items. It needs to feel like a scene in a musical, I think, for this to pop, because there is so much potential. Um, the producer of Queen Bees I am in contact with, if this wins, Someone reach out to me. I will put you in contact with him. I don't think that... The, I'm not going to be like, this needs a revamp already. I think it, it sounds pretty good, the production. I do think it needs a little shake up here and there, particularly at the end, that build up into that last chorus. I feel it loses momentum slightly. But if you want his number, I can give it to you. The guy that produced Queen Bees, which I think was it is one of my favourite songs last year. It's the same vein, the same ilk as this song. It just needs a bit, a bit of a contemporary feel. I get the sound of the song, I get what it's trying to do and what it is doing successfully. It just needs a bit of an oomph. And like I said, it loses momentum at the end. She does that note, um, which picks up, but I think in the production, it needs more of a kind of climax. Oh, bless her. Yay. Um, I like that. I really want Malta to definitely consider that. But ultimately, it can be more of a wow moment depending on how she stages it. So, Eliana, still think that's my favourite song so far. But you're the fourth song I've, I've reacted to. Right, I want to check out two more. Um, which ones do I want to check out again? I had it in my head. I wanted to check out... Um, oh, that one in Maltese that people were saying was very good. It was this one, wasn't it? Mikhail. Oh, this is the guy with the eyes. Guy with the eyes? I mean, everyone has eyes. But he has very nice eyes. The production's confusing me a bit.
It's a nice melody. I remember this one now. I think this was in my personal top 15 from the snippets. Okay, a bit like Eliana, I have to kind of see potential in these songs. This song isn't the finished product. It needs more of a kind of dramatic ballad production for it to kind of pop a little bit. But the chorus, the, the melody in the chorus is good. And like I said, he's got amazing eyes. I like the melody in this chorus. Man, the dude can sing. I love the fact that someone clearly said, how much jewelry would you like? And he was like, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of jewelry going on. I think this one's quite good. It's got a kind of cultural flair to it, and I'm not saying that just because it's in Maltese. I like the melody on that chorus. I think there's a lot of potential with that song. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to say it with Eliana because it wasn't necessarily that much, but for that one it is. That one does need a revamp already. But I've just seen only 671 views and there was a thousand on Eliana's. Okay. Um, I watched that one because one or two people have said, watch out for that one. Either it might be just a case of it's the best of a, of a mediocre to bad bunch and therefore as a result of it, it shines. But I like the chorus. There's something in this one that shouldn't be dismissed. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go back to last week's. I want to check out Matt Black's. I'm a fan of Matt Black. 2,000 views, that's promising. Follow him on social media. He's been in Ireland recently, I don't know where. Oh no! Uh, why is this not working? Uh, I was just getting into that then. Come on. Uh, Matt Black, he just wants to shine. There we go. That's okay. Yay! I now just want to say, come, come around now, come, come around now, come, hey, hey. This is another one that needs to be performed, isn't it? Right. Your body. That is a saving grace because up until this point, I was like, oh, I preferred his song last year. Um, but ultimately, I'm loving the dance break. There is somewhat of a chorus. I've always, chorus, I've always said I'm quite crit critical of replacing a chorus with a dance break. But there is a somewhat chorus there and I do like the dance break. I can't see... Can't wait to see how that's going to be staged. But I like this moment now. Which makes me wonder whether that should be brought in earlier. Because I had reservations. Because I really, really like him. And I find him so entertaining. And he seems like such a cool guy. But I was a little bit hesitant. But I seem, at this point, to be on board. I mean, it's not controversial anymore um, because he's out, but I will say how he's performing this is much better than how Aiden performed his. I still think, though, 
the quarterfinal setup is setting them to fail. How are they going to showcase a song which they know themselves needs to be formed with singers, with choreography? I do not like this format. I hope this is the last time Malta does this. He's bringing in different elements to the song at the end. Shake, shake your body. Very, very, very good. What was that like ethnic kind of fluty thing that came in at that moment in time? Why is he not utilizing that more in the production? How do I get back to that? This bit's amazing. Like a proper Chanel potential moment. This bit. I want more of that. That moment there, I get why it's in there. I'm hoping he's gonna do a dance break. That kind of ethnic whistle thing, which I loved, and even though it was only there for a couple of seconds, why can't that be brought in more? And then shake, shake your butt. Why can't you just bring that into the first dance break as well? There's so many good things within this song. Malta, literally, like, please. I don't want it to be a one, one horse race. Like last year, I watched MESC final, although I've got to be careful. People in Malta do not need to be patronised. But I did watch um, MSC final, um, so I apologise if that came across that way. MESC final last year, it was so disheartening watching it because Emma is beautiful, she's an amazing singer, she's a great songwriter. That song was not the best song last year. And I just couldn't believe how much it won by the televote and how much ev well, every jury gave it 12 points. I, th I, th I think the same might happen with Brooke. But ultimately, I just think there are some little diamonds here that need to also be considered and talked about. Matt Black being one, um, and Eliana being another. So, and also, the dude with the eyes, with the Maltese ballad. I think there's potential in that song. Okay, so that might not be as it stands better than Brooks, but I think the melody in that chorus is great. And give that to a decent producer who knows what they're doing to make that kind of pop in the production, because it does sound slightly basic that could do well there are good songs in malta i think like i you know don't be swayed if you're kind of a casual eurovision fan or a eurovision fan that's not really got into mesc don't be swayed by other people well there's me being preachy shane you've only just checked these out today but <laughs> i think you should give these songs a chance matt black eliana and the guy in the middle mikhail mikhail you know his name so yeah those are my thoughts. So please let me know. Please let me know what you think. Please do comment below. Um, if you're still here and you haven't subscribed, please do click the notification button so you're informed if and when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.